Tengu's Invisible Cloak. Once upon a time, in a village, there was a mischievous boy named Gonta living with his mother. One day, Gonta took a bamboo pipe from his house and climbed up a nearby hill. At the top of the hill, Gonta put one end of the bamboo pipe to his eye and looked at the village below. Wow! I can see everything. I can clearly see every bit of what's happening in the village right now. Hey, Taro is being scolded by his mother again. Ha ha ha. Of course, this bamboo pipe was just an ordinary bamboo pipe. Bamboo pipes are blocked off at the ends. So there was no way that he could see the village's view. What on earth was Gonta thinking? Oh, I wonder if what am I seeing beyond the mountains is the capital of Kyoto. It's so beautiful. As Gonta was looking around through the bamboo pipe over his eye, suddenly someone spoke to him from behind. Hey boy, it looks like fun. Show it to me too. Although Gonta turned around right away, there was no one there. Huh, that's strange. I'm sure I just heard someone's voice. Where are you looking? I'm right here. Suddenly, a giant man with a red face loomed before Gonta's very eyes. The man turned out to be a yokai creature known as Tengu, who lived around here since ancient times. Tengu then sat down boldly in front of Gonta. Hey boy, that bamboo pipe in your hand. Can I borrow it for a little while? Huh? No! This is my treasure! Hey, I'm begging you. Tell you what, in return for that, I'll let you have my treasure. Tengu then took off the cloak he was wearing. This is called the invisible cloak, and when you put it on, your body becomes completely invisible. Hey, remember? Before you couldn't see me, even though I was standing right behind you. That's the cloak's magic hiding power. I bet it made you want this. Well, if you insist, I can trade my bamboo pipe for it for a bit. Oh, really? Then... Tengu then gave Gonta his cloak. And in return, he received Gonta's bamboo pipe. With great excitement, Tengu immediately put the bamboo pipe to his eye and tried to take a look around. However... What the hell is this? I can't see a thing. Again, what Gonta had was merely an ordinary bamboo pipe. It turned out that Tengu was completely tricked by Gonta's clever mischief. Hey boy, how dare you trick me? Huh? When the Tengu turned around, Gonta wasn't there. Damn it! 
That boy must have used my invisible cloak and ran away. Tengu went insane with rage, and in search for Gonta, he swiftly rushed off somewhere. In the meantime, Gonta was running through the forest with his body covered with the invisible cloak. I got such an amazing tool. With this, I'll make as much mischievous as I please. Then, from the other side of the path, the old man next door came walking towards Gonta. The moment the old man was about to pass by Gonta, he spoke to the old man. Hello, old man. Oh, hello. Ah, oh, there's no one. What in the world has happened? Hee hee, this is so much fun. Tomorrow, I'll visit the village in this cloak. The entire village will surely be in a great turmoil. After returning home, Gonta, while being careful not to be caught by anyone, hid the cloak in the back of drawer. However, early the next morning, Gonta's mother, while sorting out the clothes in the drawer, happened to find the invisible cloak. Huh, what's this shabby cloak? Gonta must have brought back some strange junk again. Gonta's mother then took out the cloak from the drawer and threw it into a burning hearth. In the afternoon that day, Gonta opened the drawer to take out the cloak. However, Ha! Huh? Oh no, my cloak is gone. Oh, talking about that. This morning, I burnt it in the hearth while you were still asleep. Oh no, you can't be serious. Gonta rushed to the hearth, but the cloak was already burnt to ashes. Oh no, I was so excited to find such an interesting item. Hmm, wait, maybe... Gonta then scooped up the ashes left in the hearth and tried putting them on his arm, and then... Yes, just as I thought. Surprisingly, Gonta's arm started to fade away and ended up being invisible. Gonta quickly gathered up the ashes and covered his whole body in them. Then, Gonta's body instantly turned perfectly invisible, just as then he wore the cloak. All right. Let's go to make trouble. Gonta rushed out of his house. Having arrived at the village, Gonta first headed to a dango dumpling shop. Gonta then quickly ate up a customer's dango dumplings from his plate and drank up all of the tea. It was such an astonishing sight for both the dango dumpling shop owner and the customer whose dumplings were all eaten. Hey, hey, my dumplings had just vanished. The teacup floated in the air, and the tea in it also vanished. What in the world has happened? Ha ha ha, look at them. They both look so freaked out. All right. Where should I go next? Gonta wiped away the bean paste from his mouth and left the shop. Then, at that moment... What's that? A mouth suddenly appeared. It must be a yokai creature. 
a yokai only with a mouth. When Gonta wiped off the bean paste from his mouth, the ash around it came off together. And so, his mouth turned visible again. Oh shoot, I'd better run. Gonta rushed off in a big hurry. However, by following Gonta's mouth floating in the air, the shop owner came chasing after him. Stop, yokai. You must pay for the dumplings. Oh no! H help! Gonta ran all over the village and eventually ran down to the riverside. To hide behind a bush by the river. However, because Gonta was in a big rush, he accidentally tripped and fell into the river. Gonta swam through the river and somehow managed to run away from the shop owner. However, all the ashes on Gonta's body came off in the water, and by the time he came out of the river, his body was completely back to normal. Crap! With that invisible power, I could have done as much mischievous as I wanted. Oh well, I'll just think of something interesting again. With these words, while thinking about new ideas for mischief, Gonta went back home. <laughs>